Ladies and gentlemen, the first person to land a spacecraft upon the moon and the first person to set foot upon its surface, Mr. Neil Armstrong. so much. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Reed, Mr. McConnell, Ms. Pelosi, members, distinguished guests. We gather in this remarkable monument to American history, this room connecting the houses of Congress, this room where ideological differences fade in the presence of the overpowering force of pride in what we do and what Americans have achieved. It's a privilege to be in this rotunda. High above us, just below the windows, stretches a frieze with 19 panels depicting important events in American history. The most recent of them, number 19, just above me here, depicts the first successful flight of a man in a powered aircraft. by the Brothers Wright 108 years ago. The depiction, in addition to the craft and the responsible individuals, includes an American bald eagle carrying an olive branch. Wilbur and Orville Wright were the 45th recipients of the Congressional Gold Medal and the first for achievements in the world of flight. Subsequently, congressional gold medals have been presented nine times for aviation and rocketry achievements. Today, for the first time, they are being given for achievements in spaceflight. In an appropriate coincidence, Apollo 11's mission emblem and crew patch also featured an American bald eagle carrying an olive branch. The Apollo 11 crew is honored to receive the Congressional Gold Medal and accept on behalf of our fellow Apollo teammates, all those who played a role in expanding the human presence outward from Earth and all those who played a role in expanding human knowledge of the solar system and beyond. We thank the Congress very much. Ladies and gentlemen, the former United States Senator from the state of Ohio and the first American to orbit the Earth, the Honorable John Glenn. Thank you. Thank you all very, very much. Leaders of the House and Senate, members of the Congress, ladies and gentlemen, first, thanks to each of you for being here today to share this very, very special occasion with us. From our founding days, Americans have been motivated by curiosity 
about the new and the unknown, whether it was geographical exploration that pushed back the frontiers of a continent, or micro-exploration in our laboratories. That curiosity and research, coupled with an education system that let all our citizens benefit and contribute, were the twin engines of progress that catapulted America into world preeminence. But there were other frontiers never before believed to be approachable. And for many, many thousands of years, people had looked up and wondered, had been curious, about what was up there. Now, we must consider ourselves among the most fortunate of all generations, for we have lived at a time when the dream became a reality, when we finally could travel above the atmosphere around the Earth, where we could establish laboratories in space and do research, and for the very first time in history, leave human footprints on some place other than Earth, as Neil and Buzz and Mike made their epic journey. The message they left on the lunar surface could be said of all our manned space travels. We came in peace for all mankind. These dreams were brought to life by one of the most dedicated and capable teams ever put together, workers, technicians, engineers, scientists. Honored as we are today, we certainly share this recognition with that great team. Almost 50 years ago, following the Orbital Flight of Friendship 7, I was very privileged to address a joint session of Congress. And I closed my remarks then with words I will repeat today. As our knowledge of the universe in which we live increases, may God grant us the wisdom and guidance to use it wisely. Thank you.